All right. First, let's look at the idea of heap sort. All right. Do some key observation. There is a property we want to find. So look at a typical heap like this. Okay. First, suppose this is a heap. We know the largest element. Yeah, so here we assume max heap. Okay, yeah. So, you know, by default, we assume we use a max heap. So the main heap, so similar, so we can convert it easily. Yeah, so let's just look at the max heap. For the max heap, the largest element is at the root. Yeah. All right. The question, how to put it in place? Because sorting, we know, we put all the elements in place. Then we sort the whole array. All the elements in place. So let's put our first element in place. The max element in place. Yeah. The question is, how do we do it? Okay, yeah. Suppose this is an array. Okay, and we use this array to store the heap. First, we know the root corresponds to the first element in the array, a of one. Okay, so this is a of one, first element in the array. Okay, last element a of n. Okay, all right. And we know. The largest element, the final location for the largest element should be here. Okay? So, current location here, the final location there, how do we make that change? Right? Yeah. And we know the last element corresponds to this position in the heap. Okay? So, how do we make that change? Right? The change is very simple. Just one swap operation. Swap A of 1 and A of N. One swap operation, we can make that change. We can put one element in place. Okay. All right. But after we do that operation, the heap structure is not correct anymore. We need to fix it. We need to do max heapify at the root location because after you do the swap, there is a violation at the root. So we need to fix it. After we fix it, we recover the heap structure. So we need to do one max heapify operation to recover it to a heap. A new heap. Yeah. In this new heap, we do not include the elements that are already in place. Yeah, because it's already in place, why we need to include it? Yeah. yeah. We do not touch all the elements that are already in place. Yeah. So here you can see we reduce the heap size by one element. Every time when we put one heap one element in place, we reduce the heap size by one. Okay, so in this way. At the end, we reduce the heap, you know, until we put all the elements in place. Okay, all right. So we can write a pseudocode for the whole procedure, for the heap sort. Yeah. We use recursion. Yeah, so, yeah, so here you can see, yeah, we... Yeah, actually, so let me see. Yeah, here I said recursion. Yeah, because recursion, there is a problem, right? So there is a, you know, stack problem. Stack, you know, use too much memory. Yeah. So actually here, it's not a recursion. Yeah. Here we use iteration. So more precisely, we use iteration. Yeah, so because we use a for loop. Okay, all right. Build a heap. Yeah, at the beginning, you need to build a heap. Yeah, but we only do this one time. Yeah, this building step, only we 
with ones. After that, for loop. So here you can see the for loop, we can avoid using recursion. So we do iteration instead of recursion to avoid that hidden stack usage, deep stack usage problem. Okay. Then in each iteration, we do a swap operation first. Swap the root element with i, the last element in the current heap. Remember, our current heap, at the beginning, it has size n. Then every time we reduce the size by 1 until the last one, the size is 2. Because when the size is 2, we need to do another iteration. If size is 1, we do not need to do iteration, right? Already in place. So that's why our last heap size is 2. Yeah. After that, we reduce the heap size by 1. Okay. Then we do the max heapify. Yeah. Although we pass A to it, because this A array is only applied to the reduce the heap size. So we are fine. We do not touch those elements that are already in place at the end of the array. Yeah, so, all right, yeah. Then, we, after we complete this for loop, we will get the whole array sorted. Yeah. Now, let's look at the cost of this whole procedure. How much is the cost we want to estimate? Yeah. The cost, build a max heap we only do once. So this is, we pay this cost only once. Yeah. Swap operation, each step we pay big of one. Okay. Reduce the heap size by one, big of one. Then the max heapify, big of the height. So what is the height? Log of i. Because the current heap size is i, the log base 2 of the heap size. Yeah. But we do these things in a for loop, right? Yeah, so accumulative cost, big of 1, only do once. Big O of 1, we do n time, times, so big O of 1. Also big O of 1, the second. Then the last one, summation of these numbers. Okay. So we need to estimate this part. The remaining, the three parts, very easy. Yeah. But what is this? Okay. Yeah. First, we have an easy upper bound because n log n. Why? Because each term less than or equal to log n. Okay. But we have n minus 1 terms. So n minus 1 log n, but this one can be ignored, okay? So that's why we get n log n, okay? So you can see we can estimate the cost of a heap sort in this way easily, yeah. But even we get this function, I still want to ask, can we do better than this, right? Yeah. So as a math practice question, so I want to estimate the logarithm series more precisely. Yeah. This is our mathematical th series. Yeah. We want to estimate upper bound, lower bound, so twice. Okay. Here we will use integral representation. Yeah, so the calculus integral representation to do this estimation. Okay. The first time we only estimate the upper bound, the second time lower bound. Okay, all right. First, we already have this upper bound, right? Because each term less than or equal to, yeah. Here I use natural log 
natural log. Second term also less than. But last one equals, yeah. But we have n, so n log n. Here we use natural log and not log of this too, because in calculus, natural log is easiest to calculate. Yeah. So in calculus, we like to use natural log, not log base two. But the you know difference is only a constant multiplier. So we don't worry about that difference. Okay. Use the base change formula so we can take care of the difference easily. All right. Now let me draw a graph of the natural log function. Okay. I want to use geometry to get a visual expression and then do the estimate. All right. Now let's look at these integer locations from 1 through n plus 1. And then we draw vertical lines to evaluate the function values on the curve. So we get, you know, these function values. Yeah. Then we draw all these shaded rectangular bars. All these rectangular bars. Why we draw these rectangular bars? You will see because we want to use areas. So here, the area method. Here we use area-based method. We want to calculate the area. So A sub shade, the shaded area expression, clearly less than A the curved expression. The the area under the curve. Yeah, because you can see we have the extra part other than the shaded area, right? The extra part greater or equal to zero. So greater than zero actually. You see? So that's why visually we have this expression. So we can get the you know this inequality easily. Then let's represent A subshade and a curve, All right? A shade, now, the rectangular bar representation, that's easy, right? You know, log, natural log of one, that's zero, yeah, because that corresponds to, you know, this part, the line, okay? The second term, the height is natural log of two, the width is one. So this is the width. Width is 1, between 2 and 3, so the width is 1. So not natural log of 2 times 1. Okay. Similarly, so each natural log number times 1. Okay, Last times 1. So that's the shaded vertical rectangular bar, the area of that. So we're adding them up, so that's the total shaded area. Yeah. But that area is less than the A curve part. So what is the A curve area? Definite integral. Yeah, because in the integration theory, we know we can represent a curved area using definite integral. So integration from 1, lower limit of the integral, that's 1. The upper limit of the integral, that, that's m plus 1. Okay, yeah, the function is natural log of x. So that is our integral expression. After that, then we use integral by parts. The technique, integral by parts. So I hope you still remember that. Yeah, so there is a formula. We apply that formula here. So we get the answer. This is the answer. Okay? And so you can see if you compare this expression with the upper bound, how much different. Right? Yeah. So you can see pretty close. Yeah. Actually, the growth function 
is that the same? The growth function, yeah. Because when we look at the growth function, we can ignore these little terms. You know, n log n dominates the second term, so we only keep the dominant term n log n without the leading coefficient. Yeah. That's the growth function. Yeah. All right, so we get the upper bound estimate. How about the lower bound estimate? Yeah, we can do the same thing, but we need to change slightly. Yeah. This time we consider the shaded area that cover the curved area, cover the whole curved area. Okay, so we draw rectangular bars that can cover the whole curved area in that way. So you can see the representation. The shaded area still the same representation in our original series. Yeah. But the curved part this time from 1 to n. 1 to n. Yeah. Not n plus 1. Yeah. Because that part can be covered by the shaded area. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we still do the integral by part and apply the formula so we get this expression. So you can see the even the lower bound, still we have the same growth function. Yeah, because we can ignore the you know minor term. Yeah. Combine the two sides together. The final inequality from lower bound, upper bound, the two sides, we have this expression, upper bound, lower bound. Okay? Yeah. So the minor term can be ignored, right? So the, you know, minor little terms can also be drop it. So we get the whole expression in big theta of n log n. Okay? So that's about the, the efficiency analysis of the heap sort. Yeah. So we we complete analysis part. Yeah. So at this point we complete the whole heap sort. But for this class, we still have another part other than the heap sort. Still, we have another, uh, you know, interesting topic, uh, binary expansion, exponentiation. Yeah. That topic we did a little bit before. Yeah. But next, we need to complete the whole problem, binary exponentiation. All right. Yeah, so let's finish this part first.